secret's out. It's the best and brightest Black Friday sale ever at Lord & Taylor. Going on now, get an extra 50% off newly reduced fashion for up to 80% off. The coziest cashmere sweater for $39.99. The chicest shoes and handbags for $29.99. 60% off the finest jewelry and the coolest coats for the warmest family at up to 60% off. Plus, get free shipping on lordandtaylor.com. Going on now at the best price secret, Lord & Taylor. Log Talk Radio.
ladies and gentlemen. This is Yvonne Mason with Off the Chain. That was the Teskey Brothers called I Love a Woman. And y'all that have been following this show since inception know that Australia is our biggest listening base at 96% on this show alone. The Teskey Brothers are from Australia, and they are a blues band. If you've ever listened to Johnny Lang, Roy Orbison, B.B. King, Robert Johnson, Eric Clampton, Billy Joel, all the greats, that's what these guys sound like all rolled into one. And they just won some major awards in Australia for their music. They are absolutely phenomenal. If you get a chance, look them up. Friend them on on, uh, Facebook and buy their music because you can't beat their their ability to sing the blues. If I didn't know better, I would think they were on the streets of New Orleans down on on Bourbon Street making a living. So congratulations to the Teskey Brothers, and that's why they opened the show tonight. Now, it is the evening before Thanksgiving. It is Wednesday here in the United States. We call it Thanksgiving Eve. Tomorrow is our Thanksgiving Day. But, you know, we need to take a break from cooking and prepping and all the crap that we do to overeat tomorrow and be miserable all day. So we decided to run the show. And I am so tickled because this show is about all of y'all. It's about my guests, about the listeners, And when I ran the numbers this morning, the show itself, ladies and gentlemen, 75,159 listeners, just keeps blowing me away. It's not my show, it's y'all's show. It just keeps blowing me out of the water. Now, I hope all of you all are sitting down, not driving your car or or, or running or doing whatever you do, because this is going to shock you. It's just really going to knock your socks off. When you take all the podcasts that the show goes up on after the show is over with, and we're heard in over 70 countries, we are at 95,300 listeners. We're less than 5,000 listeners shy of 100,000 listeners. I'm I'm amazed. I am just humbled that y'all keep coming back. You keep listening to the show. You keep sending me people to interview, and I am very very grateful. Now, you don't have to come on the show if you're the shy sort, but yet you want your product out there. I'd much rather have you on the show, but if you want your product out there, go to advertisecast.com and in the search engine look up off the chain, and I will run your ad for a month. I do four shows a month for the most part, so it will run four times a week for four weeks. And the prices, the highest I charge is $100. Now, you can't beat that anywhere because most places charge four and $500 just for a three-month ad. So check it out. Go to AdvertiseCast.com, look up off the chain. Now then, let's get down to the fun part. We got the housekeeping out of the way. Thank the Teskey Brothers. Thank all of y'all. Tonight's guest, I'm so excited to have her. I met her last year at the Coco Beach event that we keep talking about, um, where we all go and have this big event in June. And she's a she's a new author, but she's so funny. I just love her. She writes under H. K. Cizak. Now I'm going to spell that because when I read it, I was trying to figure out how to pronounce it, and I just knew I was going to murder it. And then I heard it pronounced, and it's it's very interestingly spelled. It's S-Z-C-Z-E-S-I-A-K. And no, y'all cannot go now because you don't know what she writes. But I'm going to call her Heather, but she writes under H-K. She is an author of contemporary romance, and she lives in Delaware with her husband and two children and their dog, Wrigley. Heather is an avid reader who loves romance novels the most. She also works full-time in a corporate setting as well as owns and runs her own photography company and captures from the heart, called Captures from the Heart Photography. See, I can't talk tonight, people. Her most recent addition is becoming a, I can't pronounce it, Syngency distributor 
which is a beauty product that she has fallen in love with. To say she is busy, well, that's an understatement. Her love of writing has always been present from the time she was little and now shows in her indie works. Enticing Sky and Explicitly Wyatt. Her third indie work, Enchanting Bell, will be out early next year. She also contributed in writing a collaboration called I Have a Name Project by writing a short story on her cousin's passing. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome H.K. Cizak, and I will call her Heather because that is what the H stands for. Welcome, my friend. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine if I could wrap my tongue around the word. <laughs> It's pronounced Cesiac. Cesiac. See, yes. I still massacred it. And I, I even wrote it down when I heard um, Garrett pronounce it. Uh, uh, even wrote well, it we down spelled it out for him in very easy terms with a C, a Z, and an Ack. Yep, that's that's how I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> and I still screwed it up. <laughs> um, and the beauty stuff that I've fallen in love with is called Senegence. Thank you. See, yeah. <laughs> my, I don't know what happened. My tongue went, got its own brain cells, and then the brain, it just watched this and left for a minute. So <laughs> it's waiting for all the turkey that's coming tomorrow. No, it's dreading those 30 people that are coming to oh. my house tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the brain saying, oh. hey, crazy woman, have you lost your mind? <laughs> I'm going to shut down and watch this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, now, now that we've gotten all that laughter out of the way and I've matched your name and your your beauty products, and let's see what else I can destroy. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Nobody ever gets my name, so it's quite all right. I thought I was going to make it easy instead of having Heather Cesiak as the author name, which is my name. Um, I would shorten it so it wasn't so big and long, but the last name, maybe I should have just shortened the last name, been Heather S. <laughs> See, it, it it is a beautiful name. Please tell me where it's from, though. It's not, a, it's not native to, quote, unquote, America. No, it's a Polish last name. Um, it's my husband's, <laughs> so mine was a lot easier. Um <laughs> But yeah, so it's a beautiful his, name. It 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 is. Um, it's pretty to write too. It's got all these like Z's and loops and yeah. yeah when sure. you get towards the end, you're just tired. You kind of just scribble the rest. It looks the same. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, anyway. Well, thank you. I am so glad you came to visit with me tonight. I needed that laugh. <laughs> oh Lord! That, see, don't, honey, when you get my age, try to keep your brain cells intact and your tongue working with the brain because this is what happens. We just fall apart when we get a certain age. <laughs> yeah, it's already starting. So it's uh oh, okay. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh! Put yourself back together now. I All know. Right. I'm trying. It's like Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. <laughs> Falling apart. I fell apart years ago, and I used to tell my children I finally got my shit together, but then I forgot where to put I put it. So it was <laughs> the point. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Heather. How in the world did you get here from from photography to being a, a beauty line distributor to writing to uh, who knows what else you do in your life? Because like me, you probably get <laughs> bored, and when you get bored, you get in trouble. So you have to stay busy. I do. Yeah, I do get in trouble when I'm not like constantly <laughs> busy. I think that's what it is. Well, that's what I'm going to tell myself. Um, where? How did I get here? Well, two people fell in love, and no, um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, I I've always loved English class. And I always loved writing short stories, and I fell in love with reading. And then as you get older, you kind of, like, try to discover who you are. And I stopped reading as much as I did, and 
And I kept telling people, I need to write a book, one about my life, because nobody would believe half the crap that happens. Ooh, um, you fail. Well, <laughs> inquiring <laughs> minds need to know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You'll have to wait for the book. <laughs> ah, come on, Heather. <laughs> um, well, no, just like different things like with my daughter and just uh, some things I look at my life and I'm like, am, is there a camera around? Like am I on each true Hollywood story or something? Because I just, some of the things that happen to us, I just can't even fathom sometimes. Um, there's nothing like specific, you know, that stands out, but my daughter is, I don't even know how to explain her in, you know, 50 words or less. But she's, she's amazing. She is amazing, but she is her own, her own being. And by golly, if she gets her mindset on something, that's it. She's got to do it. And I don't know how long ago it was, but she decided she wanted juice. And she went into our little back room where we keep, juice and stuff so we don't have to keep it all in the fridge and she decided she was going to make it herself so she got a cup and yeah so the juice went all over the floor she just finished the rest of the juice on the floor it was cranberry juice so it was lovely shade of red and (laughs) she was pretty much doing like snow angels in the kitchen floor in the juice so it (laughs) I mean just some things that you just you're like how is this even possible? <laughs> well, so you know, it was on we, the floor. I mean, she went well, through with what she had. It was on the floor. Let's be creative. Well, yeah, yeah. She was very, very creative. That's funny. I mean, don't worry about drinking the glass you overfilled. Let's play in it now. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's there. Why not? We'll clean it up oh. later, but right now let's make snow angels out of cranberry juice. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's something else. So that's why I'm always like, oh, I need to write a book about my life because some of the things that we come across and, you know, just happen to us on a daily, weekly, hourly basis um, just are hard to believe half the time. <laughs> I, I just find that amazing because she took the whole whole thing of making lemonade out of lemons to an entirely new level. She did. She's like, well, it's down here. Might as well play in it. Yeah, why not? What else are you going to do with it? Mop it she up? Could, That's no fun. She could make a swimming pool out of a puddle. No joke there. See? Very creative. Very creative. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so when you... What was it about English that you loved? I know it wasn't diagramming sentences because no, it was boring. not diagramming sentences, and it wasn't um, sentence structures either. <laughs> was it, it was dangling just... participles? Either? <laughs> <laughs> no, not <laughs> verbs or adjectives. None of them. Um, it was just the way that the the English language could really move a person. Um, I'm trying to think how to word this. You can hurt someone with your words. You can show someone affection with your words. You can really make a person feel with your words. And I really enjoyed that. So when I read now and when I read as a child, I envisioned myself in the story. So when I read books, it's like I become one with that character that I'm reading. So... I feel like I'm going on this journey with them, and when the book ends, I'm usually, like, highly upset because I'm like, well, now what? I want to get married. Come on, let's have kids. <laughs> um, but it it stops, and I'm like, okay, now I have to, like, <laughs> mentally compartmentalize that I have to go on <laughs> in the real world. So I really enjoyed English class because it just brought so many new things to life for me. I I like to be artistic in a sense where I like photography and um, I like writing. So it's more more like the artistic side coming out where I can now write and describe what I visualize. So let me ask you this. When you do your photography, do you see a story in your pictures? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Not every single one. Because sometimes people are just drunk dancing at weddings, and you're like, okay, you do your thing. Um, But when the couple is, you know, at the altar and they see each other for the first time, it's it's those moments that I like envision this whole love story that they had leading up to their their wedding day. And I mean, it may be as grand as I make it out to be in my head, or it may not. I don't know. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) there. There's only been a handful of weddings that have moved me to tears. And that's hard when you're trying to photograph a wedding, when you're crying. Yeah. <laughs> tears um, streaming the, down your face, and you're trying to get them in focus, and it's not I them, know, it's you. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know who's out of focus here. It's me, them. I don't know. I just have to stop. Uh, the last wedding that I cried at, the the groom had lost his mother early in life. And, like, I think he was 14, he said, and... So they didn't have necessarily a um, mother-son dance, but he gave this, like, really touching speech, and then they played a song, and he danced with his um, his bride, and it just, I was in tears. I was like, oh, my goodness, what is wrong with these people making me cry? Um, You're supposed to be neutral, Heather. <laughs> But I and I had never met them before their wedding day, but I just felt so connected to them that I was like, "Oh my God, I feel so bad for you. I'm putting that in a book." But <laughs> so I I just put myself in their shoes, and if they're you know a couple that you're in the back of your mind, you're like, "Are they going to make it?" You kind of hope they do, because uh-huh. um, you see the bickering and, and the things that go on because it's high emotions at weddings. But in my mind, everybody has a happy ending. And that that brings me to what made you start out doing poetry and short stories? Oh, um, many, many moons ago, when I was a wee child, <laughs> I, I like to say that what I was writing were song lyrics, even though... I'm not musical at all. I like to sing, but I can't guarantee I'll hold a tune. But So basically I was writing poetry with repeating verses. That would have been the chorus. But I, I always kept them in a binder, and it was just an outlet for me to express these emotions that I was um, either observing or feeling or wondering about, you know, love and, and hurt heartache and and joy. Would it be safe to say that it was a therapeutic endeavor for you to to write down verse and short stories and Oh, absolutely. Cuz it takes you out of your current reality and you can mold and shape either your poems or your short stories or your novels in any direction you want. Did you ever publish any of your poems or short stories? No, they're still sitting in a three-ring binder in my attic. <laughs> really? But they're, you need they to are. publish them. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's that's going back to like the nineties. <laughs> well, so. you know, things do come in full circle. Yeah, they do. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. I wouldn't I mean, even I, know what I'd call it, <laughs> the musings of a young child. <laughs> I have no or, idea. Or the, musing, the musings of a, um, it was on the tip of my tongue and it just went away, the musings of a young woman in transition. To adulthood, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, think that's... about it. Our life, every seven years, our life does transition. Mm-hmm. And I bet that is true. Just, If you pull them out of the attic and read them, you would probably find that there isn't really that big of a leap from what you were writing then to what you're writing now. No, they were all, you know, either someone was hurt and now they're found kind of thing and their love song versus stories, whatever, um... So, no, I guess it's not – 
Well, it didn't have the kink and the sex in it that my books have now. Ah. <laughs> so it, it was more G-rated. <laughs> well, you could you could jazz it up. I had just a little spice to it, and there you go. <laughs> Rework it a little bit. <laughs> there you go. See how well that works, and you could you could still have musings from transition to young womanhood or whatever you wanted to call it. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, you know, I might just have to. See, you heard it first here, lady. No, y'all cannot <laughs> go get her books now. I know she said the sex words, but nope, you gotta wait, gotta wait, because we're just getting wound up. Um, when you on the show with our friend Garrett. With hanging with Webb, that was also a first for you, was it not? It was. Um, I was very nervous, and there's no reason I should have been because essentially I'm just in a room with him and his wife. Right. <laughs> so, um, but there are a lot of bright lights, and um, the camera's like staring right at you in two different directions, and I'm like, oh my lord! I'm like, is this my good angle or is this my bad angle? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but you did so well. I was so proud of you. I got a lot of stuff on you when I watched that show. I found out about about your daughter, and I found out about your photography and and your, the poets and the short stories and all kinds of good stuff on you. That writing is therapeutic for you. When you mm-hmm. are writing, when you when you are writing, when you're sitting down and and can totally concentrate and are writing, do you find that when you have to come back to the real world, that it takes you a minute to readjust your way of thinking? Um, yeah, in a way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just like when you read a book. You, well, for me, anyway. Um, I usually read before bed, and then that usually leads to 3 in the morning, and I'm like, oh, no, I have to get up in two hours. Um, but, yeah, I do have a hard time some you know in some way to just jump from um skyra and wyatt's life back to my own life i'm like well where's my billionaire husband you know <laughs> where's, well, where's my uh luxurious house do they wake you up in the middle of the night because they want their story told um I can't say that they wake me up. I do feel the urge to write when it's really not convenient to write. I understand uh, you that. Know, I do, I do, I get staff it. Staff yeah. meetings at work. So I'll handwrite it, and it looks like I'm taking great notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love but, it. Um, so, yeah, and I have a little note thing on my phone that, you know, if I'm in the car kind of thing, I'll pull over and speak it out real quick and or type it in, just kind of jog my memory later on. But I I do I do say that I'm going to miss them when their story's over. So I, maybe that's why I'm dragging my feet on the last book because I know it's the last book. But then you them. had to go on an entirely new adventure with entirely new characters i know and i've already had them knocking at my brain (laughs) so i'm like i can't keep up people like i need a day just to be me well they're not gonna let you oh no 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 just like kids don't let you (laughs) no Mm -mm, mm -mm. now i know that one of your passions is autism and and ladies Mm -hmm. and gentlemen you've heard me talk about this before and that i do not label children because i have a brother that was labeled years ago and i refuse to put labels on anyone because truth be told every one of us is challenged in some form and if we say we're not we lie so i prefer to say that children are unique and mm-hmm. children that are labeled with autism are the most unique children in the world. Why is autism or the awareness of autism and the education of autism so important to you? Um, it's very important to me and my family because 
when my daughter was about, I want to say one, one and a half, um, she showed signs early that something wasn't typical. Uh, She didn't make eye contact, and she sure as hell never knew her name. And Lord knows we said it a few times to her, um, (laughs) trying to get her attention to look at us and interact. Um, But she wasn't hitting those milestones, so we brought it up to the doctor, and we got to see um, a person with a local charter i don't i don't know if they're everywhere so i don't want to say that they're everywhere and everybody should go seek them Um, but it's called child inc and from there we met this fabulous gentleman who had a son of his own that showed these traits in his earlier days and so he kind of knew everything that we were going through and um so we had testing from there and they they test a kid that they think is on this spectrum um, with different things, like calling their name, seeing if they respond to typical things like, you know, look at this or things that are we take for granted, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and how she would, you know, hold things and play with things and just how she interacted with others. Um, so I was in denial in the beginning and I was like, this is not happening. Uh, but I guess it took, you know, a short period of time because you don't want to ever deny your kid having an opportunity to get early intervention no matter what it's for, whether it's for reading, writing, speaking, you know, it doesn't matter. You you don't want to hold them back. And right. once I, I got over that it, within myself I was able to fully jump in and and we got her the help she needed she was the youngest to ever go to the school here in Delaware for um, kids that were on the spectrum or labeled autistic and um, she's just thrived since we've gotten her the help and because of the programs that we've jumped into and and been a part of and raised money for and we speak our minds when it comes to things for her we're her voice we're her eyes we're her ears and we don't stop (laughs) so we we put everything we have into helping others that are just like our daughter um i've i've had other friends come to me and say can you talk to so and so, I really think that their kid show, is showing signs. Can you, you know, talk to them and see how they want to go about getting them help? And I'm like, well, you can't just tell somebody your child is autistic if you're not a doctor <laughs> or you don't have the proper, <laughs> you know, degrees to do that. And I sure as heck don't. Um, but I told them the steps that I took, and you know, I know everything that they're going through, and if they needed anybody I was there to to talk to them but um we're just we've always been a part of it since she was diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum so we we alter our life and we do whatever we can for her to make her thrive to make her happy and we see other kids through her school or her aftercare program And we look at her, we're like, it could be so much worse Uh than what we're dealing with. So we're just thankful that she's as perfect to us as she can be. And would it be fair to say, Heather, that she has probably taught y'all so much more than you might have learned if you had not been blessed with her? Because I believe that God gives us, Things what we can handle. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I would say that my brother taught me a whole lot more than I could ever teach him because he never quits. He doesn't believe in quitting. It's it's not an option. And to watch her do things and, and, and be successful and look at things through her eyes because we sort of get jaded 
and say, oh, yeah, that's nice. But when we look at it's something through someone else's eyes, especially someone as unique and as beautiful and as powerful as your daughter, it takes on a whole new meaning. It it does. Um, she has taught us a lot about ourselves. Um, a lot of things such as the cranberry juice all over the kitchen floor, it, it's not as upsetting <laughs> as right. it would be uh, for a typical child to, you know, decide they just wanted to dump, dump juice all over the floor. Um, whereas it could be a defiant thing with a typical kid, but with Emma, it's total curiosity. It's, right. well, what happens if I do this? Oh, well, this makes a fun noise. Let's do it some more. <laughs> so um, she she has taught us a lot about ourselves, I think, more than anything. And it's so, so fun and, and exciting to see things through her eyes. Um, she loves to go places, and that's because we didn't, keep her locked up you know from the world we take her everywhere we go um so she's gone to the movies we've gone to we go to restaurants and we go everywhere and we take her some days are a little rougher than others but you know it's just her saying i've had enough of this like i'm i don't want to shop anymore (laughs) i'm good i can understand that because i hate (laughs) shopping I'm I'm in that boat with her. Go, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> but if we say we're going to go to the mall, she's already got an agenda planned. She wants to hit the Disney store and Target. And I'm like, well, you know, okay, we'll go. And she doesn't ask for things. She just likes to look at everything and, and play with it in the store and put it back. I'm like, that works for me, too. <laughs> well, I, before the show, we talked briefly about – my friend, Brigney Quagon, who is, like me, an, a psychic intuitive and an empath, and she teamed up with Yale University, one of the most prestigious universities in the country, and they are running a project, and she's setting up this project. She's writing the, the synopsis or the whatever it is for this project, and the project is to take individuals that have been labeled, and you and I told you before, I hate labels. But if mm-hmm. they've been labeled schizophrenic and or and or autistic, in trying to determine if indeed they have been quote unquote mislabeled, that they're really not that at all. That they are psychic intuitives, they are empaths, but they have not yet learned how to throw up that wall when they get overloads. And when they do hear, ladies and gentlemen, we're not crazy. We do hear voices <laughs> because people, we hear things, and it's 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 not insanity, and it's not crazy people talking to us. And in order to understand psychic intuitives and empaths, she sat down with the heads of this university and said, "Okay, this is what happens. This is what happens, and this is what happens." And what they told her was. That's what happens to autistics and to schizophrenics. And she says, I'm neither of those. So that's when they decided to set up this program and this project. Now, can you imagine once they get this thing going and they start working with these individuals and they can help them um, throw up these walls and be able to filter and to um, deal with with the um, sensitivities that they have, the brilliance that will come out, the creativity, the, the future. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I can see it in her um, in ways because she, she'll look – in a direction and and it's like she sees something or she hears something and I'm always like what are you what are you seeing what what are you looking at <laughs> yeah exactly um, but she um she's got an ear for music and 
I, like, we are just like, where did that come from? Because I couldn't play a piano if I was told to play a song to save my life. Uh, <laughs> so she she can hear things and just play them. Um, wow. She's taught herself, yeah, she's taught herself how to play, not like Mozart or anything, but um, what was the one? Jingle Bells was last Christmas. And Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I think, was the first one that she did. She can do Happy Birthday. And last weekend, she was watching a YouTube video of somebody playing the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Hot Dog song, and she can play that now. <laughs> so See? she if, just if, is if, incredible. If we can tap into that, the the artists, the painters, the musicians, the writers. Doctors, scientists, teachers. I mean, it's like a it's the mother load of our future just waiting to be tapped into. Yeah, I mean, I believe it. I I fully believe it. It excites me. I can't help it. <laughs> it excites me. Well, she was me. nonverbal for the first almost six years of her life. And now it's like, will you stop talking? <laughs> well, okay, think of it. She was too busy doing other things in her head to be verbal. It, she didn't have time yes. for it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I love mean, it. She wouldn't have to be verbal when she had pictures to show us of things that she wanted to do exactly. or say. Or <laughs> Amazing. So. Well, and she was actually spelling before she was talking. So she see? had foam letters, and she would spell words out for us. And yeah. See, she why bother talking when she had other ways to do things? Mm-hmm. Smart girl. Very smart. Oh, absolutely. So when they get this project on board, and and this thing goes just right over the top of the mountain, I'm gonna send Brittany to you and let Brittany. Work with your daughter because it'll be amazing. It will be absolutely oh. amazing. I see great things for her. Oh, me too. I I know she's gonna either go really really far in life or just skip over the hard steps and straight for the stop sky. There. I mean, oh, she's honey, she's going straight for the moon. What are you talking about? The stars yeah. are on. <laughs> she's she's, she's headstrong and she knows what she wants and. Yeah, you're not going to stop her kind of thing. (laughs) She'll get it. She will get it. Emma for 2020, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that just makes my heart pound with excitement. I can't wait to see what she does with her life. It's so exciting. Well, now that we've we've got Emma's future mapped out for her, (laughs) let's I'm sure she'll appreciate it. (laughs) Let's talk about your books because you were first published in 2015, and that Mm -hmm. book was called? Enticing Sky. And what is that one about? Everybody's future dream of a spouse. No. Um, (laughs) I like to describe it as two different individuals um, with different goals for their own lives, you know, coming together and and really struggling to find their place within each other, Um, how to be a couple and and how to, I guess, I guess make it work um, for what works for them. Wyatt is a man that got what he wanted, And he was pretty much uh, sex in a suit. He he didn't he didn't do monogamous relationships. He did what he wanted, kind of thing. And he obviously is very well off financially, so he could Um, no kids, no wife. He didn't have time for any of that. He wanted to live his lifestyle the way he deemed and. Skyra is the complete opposite. She, fresh out of college and starting her corporate 
career, and she didn't even know what she wanted in life, but she knew she didn't aspire to, you know, make more money than necessary. She just wanted a happy life. She wanted to just be comfortable, you know, and not and not worry about, I guess, anything but what she wanted to worry about. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's so hard <laughs> because no, without giving too, too much away. Um, so they were just two people that shouldn't have been together. So opposites attract. She saw him and they're in a sandwich shop and it's a dive sandwich shop too, by the way. So it's more her class than upper class, like his normal, um, eating arrangements would be, but he was with his brother, Riston, and Riston is more laid back, even though they come from a wealthy family, Um, but Riston's more down to earth, and everybody was like, she needs to get with Riston (laughs) as they were reading it, (laughs) and I'm like, just give it time. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So everybody was rooting for Riston, but Wyatt won out in the end, and he was changed by her, um, and she helped him see that there's more to life than money. And it, people can have a connection outside of wealthy um, without, yeah, like without all the the riches. And you know, you don't need a fancy car. You don't need, you know, a huge house. You don't you don't need all that stuff. You, you know, because at the end of the day, when you're you know, on your deathbed, you're not going to have it to take with you. So Great. so she she kind of changed him, and he fought it for a little bit throughout the book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he didn't have living grandparents, but um, the older couple that watches their, their little cabin outside of the city of Chicago, and I've never been to Chicago, so I'll, my thing is let's write a book in a city I've never been in. Um, <laughs> so that was fun. I bet. But, yeah. <laughs> so he gets this, you know, fatherly, grandfatherly advice from the older couple, um, and and they really open his eyes to what he's going to miss out on if – he throws it away like he was in the process of doing. So through that, he decides, you know, okay, she is what I want. I was just too bullheaded to really go after it kind of thing. And so there's a lot of suspense and twists and turns and um, without giving it all away. There's, there's a spot in the book that, as I was writing it, I didn't see that coming when it when I wrote it, and I was like, "Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but <laughs> damn it, that's not good." <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to give it away because it's like the most shocking part of the book. <laughs> um, so from there, I mean, they do get their happy ever after because I don't, I just don't believe in not writing one. <laughs> um, I wish everybody a happy ever after kind of thing. And uh, I I set out to write the book where it could be read as a standalone, but as I grew on the characters, it would complete each other with each story. Um, So then came the next book, (laughs) which is actually a prequel. So that one is called um, Explicitly Wyatt. Uh, I heard a lot after people had read um, Enticing Sky that they wanted to know about Rist, or not Riston, but they wanted to know about Wyatt's life before he met Belle, or, oh my gosh, I'm mixing my characters up right now. Um, <laughs> cause in my head, they're fighting to get out, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> they're like, talk about me. <laughs> so, so everybody wanted to know about Wyatt before he met Skyra. And I was like, well, I I don't know if I can do that. I mean, you, you read he was a man whore, right? I mean, what <laughs> else is there to write about? But then it came to me, and I was like, oh, 
damn if he's not a fascinating human being in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> I but it. I brought him to life, and the it, the book is really a prequel to Enticing Sky, but I wrote it after. And it's about the two brothers, Wyatt and Riston, and therefore to lead into this next book that I'm literally stuck at, like, 47, 50,000 words um, as I try to get to 70 or above <laughs> before I can call it a quits. Uh, it's Enchanting Bell, and it's about Skyra's feisty little best friend that she was a roommate of um, until the happy ever after with Wyatt. Um, because her and Bell go through their own journey in Enticing Sky. So Belle needed her own story, and her story follows with Riston. Uh, I I mean, it's not giving anything away, obviously, um, but Riston and, and Belle are in the book Enchanting Belle, so both of them get their story told. So is that the last of the that series, or have you got more coming? No, I think I'm going to end it there because of the the events that take place in this book. Um, there are some events that I've already written in the book that have happened in real life. Um, so it w- it was hard to write, and that might be why I'm dragging my feet with it too. Because if I finish this, that means it's over. <laughs> um, and I, I wrote about it in I Have a Name Project. My cousin, um, he passed away, but he he committed suicide. And I wrote a short story and about it, and it was an outer body experience for me because I, I wrote it and I put myself in his place at the uh-huh. time. So I wrote about the day that it all happened and and what happens after. Now, I mean, I'm still alive, so I don't know what happens when we do die. Right. But everything that I wrote down, his mom was told um, from a a medium, uh, like a psychic. So it was eerie that what I had written down, I had no knowledge of before writing. Wow. And his mom, after the fact, told me that the story really touched her because of those events that I wrote about were pretty much what she was told. And that's why I say it's like an outer body experience when I wrote that. Um, Well, who's to say that your cousin didn't assist you in the writing of that? I fully believe he did. I fully believe he did. Um, I fully, fully believe he did. So, it was meant for you to write that story. It was meant for you to be part of that project. Oh yeah. Uh, it, and I don't get anything out of it. Um, it's all going to charity and for a foundation. It's called I Have a Name Project, and um, it helps homeless people and um, suicide victims, uh, their family. It it helps a lot of people. So it did feel good to write it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's a sad time to talk about it, but uh, I think his story needed to be told. And, and who's to say that, that his story doesn't help someone down the road? Right. I don't, yeah, I don't know how many copies the the book has sold because mine was just a short story in a book of many um many people had hard times that they even went through and they wrote about them so i i just put certain things that had happened from his his death in enchanting bell um so it was it was hard to write and I, I feel like if it if it's over and I'm done, then then it like finally puts it to rest. And I don't I didn't feel so far that I was ready to to finish the book. Like I wasn't well, ready to put it down. 
when it when it is time, he'll tell you it's time. Say, so, okay, Heather, you, you've played around with this enough. Now put it to bed and move on to the next story because I you know. do have characters screaming at you to get out I and know. play. <laughs> I know it's oh, it's horrible. I was I signed up to do an anthology and I had to drop out because I was like I just can't I can't commit to this um, this story. And I was writing it, but I felt like it was forced. Mm-hmm. So if it's forced, it's no good. Right. And it, it was a genre that I personally don't have any experience writing in, but I was like, it's a challenge. I'm going to do uh-huh. it. <laughs> it was vampires and paranormal mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I was like, well, I mean, billionaire, vampire, same thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Guess what? You're not going to believe this. Our hour's gone. Oh. <laughs> It went, it went, it's gone. But that being said, I want you to come back. Okay. Because I have had so much fun tonight, and it's purely selfish motives. I've laughed, I've cried, I've done all kinds of things. So I've <laughs> lost my mind, which is normal for me. And and you've got so many things going on, and you're going to have so many more things going on. Please come back next year. Oh, absolutely, and I will hopefully see you back at uh, Lord Willing and the Creek Cocoa Beach. Lord Willing's and the Creek Snowbirds. Well, real quick, tell the folks where you can be found. I can be found on Amazon. I've only um, put my books on Amazon, so I could do the Kindle Unlimited for readers because it's not about right now for me making money off of my books. It's I just want people to enjoy what I've written. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, that's where you should go. And it's H-K-S-Z-C-Z-E-S-I-A-K. And she can also be found on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. Find her. Hook up with her. She's (laughs) She's absolutely amazing. I just adore her. Don't hang up when the show goes dark. Because there's some okay. things I want to tell you, but before we do go dark, I don't want to get off air without saying how, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for spending an hour the eve before Thanksgiving when you're crazy trying to get things made for dinner tomorrow. Thank you for spending an hour with me. It was so much oh. fun. Well, thank you so much for having me. It, it, I can't wait for you to come back. Now, oh, ladies, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, Of course, we won't have a show tomorrow night, but we will have a show on Friday night and Saturday night. So join us at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Friday night and Saturday night. And then on Monday, November the 12th, put that on your calendars. Best-selling author James Swain will visit with me for an hour. He has graciously agreed to be on the show on Monday, December the 12th. I cannot wait. He is one of my most favorite authors. So join us then. But join us Friday night and Saturday nights for some wonderful, wonderful authors. Saturday night is author David Hoof, and I had a brain cramp, and I don't remember who I'm having Friday night. So join us anyway. Um. You know what I say at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen? Your smile is your logo. Your personality is your business card. And how you leave people feeling after having had an experience with you, that is your trademark. They will forget your name. They will forget what you look like. But they will never, ever, ever forget how you made them feel. And who you are today or the difference between who you are today and who you want to be is what you do. And if you want to achieve greatness, would you please stop asking permission because nobody's going to give it to you. Just go out and do it. Just just be like Emma. Just do it <laughs> and be great because she is great. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank my guest, Heather Ciziak, for joining me tonight and for spending an hour with me. It was absolutely an amazing time. If you want to get on the show, email me at 
at offthechainradio at yahoo.com or hook up with me on Facebook. If you want to advertise on the show, go to, go to advertisecast.com, look up Off the Chain, and pick your poison. So until Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, this is Heather Ceziak and I saying good evening. All right, my darling, we are off the air. We are now in the archived portion of the show, but I wanted to let you know that when I get off from here and the show goes up into archives, I will tag you in the link on Facebook, and you take that link and you spread it around. Absolutely. (laughs) And then maybe not tomorrow, unless everybody goes home at a decent hour, but I will put it up on um, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Spreaker, Podcast.com, and Podcast Garden, and I will tag you in all of those links, uh, all those links, all those links, and use that. That is my gift to you. Oh, thank you. That's how you get heard in over 70 countries. I Yeah, when you said that, I was like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also heard on YouTube, iTunes, FM.com, and tune in radio and two or three more dot coms that I don't put it up on, but somebody does. Huh. So okay. y'all are heard. Y'all are heard everywhere. So spread it around. Share it with your friends and neighbors. Tell them to listen. You know anybody wants to be on the show? Tell them to contact me. And I'm going to put you down for next year. When I get back in there, I'll look up and see what dates I've got going on in May, and we'll just bring you back and have some more fun because we didn't talk about half the stuff we could have talked about. I know. Emma takes up so much. (laughs) (laughs) She's so worth it. (laughs) I know. I love talking about her, all her little fun things that she does and and all the things that she puts us through. (laughs) Well, the, the thing is, the more we the more we talk about it, the more we educate people. The more we educate people, the more people are aware. And the more people are aware, the more people will embrace. Oh yeah. I mean we still get stares and and I'm so jealous of her because she will never know what it feels like to be Teased. I mean, they can tease her, but she's not going to feel like we would. Right, because it it doesn't have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Words have power, and she owns those words, so they can't hurt her. She rises above it. She's like the top that rises to the top of the the container. She's like the cream that rises to the top of the container. All the, the silts slip whatever stays in the bottom and she just rises to the top above it yep she's she is just amazing to us (laughs) well she's a handful but (laughs) well what i need to do is we need to do a show with you and um julie morgan and i think i have another Mm -hmm. author who has a beautiful unique child and we just do a show and bring Brittany in and do a show on these beautiful, gifted children and just blow the whole thing out of the water. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, I told um, Julie, I was like, I think we're going to be BFFs now. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Because, because our, our daughters are very similar. I think hers is more um, higher up on the spectrum, where, I guess more functioning, I should say. Than than Emma, but I think her daughter might be a little older too. I'm not quite. Yeah, even. yeah, she is. And and who knows? Once Emma starts hitting puberty, you're gonna see this blossoming flower. We are dreading puberty. <laughs> see, it's coming. I'm telling you because there's something about the hormones that changes the whole dynamic. Whether you're quote unquote normal, who the hell's normal, or whether you're unique. And you're going to see such a difference. And because y'all don't hide her away, like they told my mother to hide my brother away, and she didn't, she did the same thing y'all did. She said, watch this. You expose her to life. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no reason to hide her. No, because she's a beautiful creature. 
She, you remember the the movie Beautiful Minds? Uh huh. That's her. Yep. That that's yeah. Emma, and that's that's Julie's daughter, and that's all these beautiful, beautiful children that are so unique and have so much to give. And I'm going to end it on that before I start blubbering like an idiot. (laughs) Because I'm so proud of them. And so I will get you back on the show, and we'll work on getting that show going so we can have so much fun discussing all that. And it will be a show dedicated to just our beautiful, beautiful children. That sounds like an amazing show. All right, my darling. Thank you again so much. Thank you. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving and all your 30 guests. <laughs> <laughs> I will. They'll eat and they'll go home. And then I can do what I do. And you go get your pie out of the oven. Oh, it is. I got it out. <laughs> all right, darling. And thank you again, and I will I will get this up and talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. When we listen to the radio, we never agree on the station. Classic rock. Hip-hop. Pop. Guys, quiet. The one thing we do agree on, we all want an awesome free phone. That's why we switched to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four free phones of your choice from brands you love, like Samsung, Motorola, and LG when you switch. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Free phone requires port. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Secrets out! It's the best and brightest Black Friday sale ever at Lord & Taylor. Going on now? Get an extra 50% off newly reduced fashion for up to 80% off. The coziest cashmere sweater for $39.99. The chicest shoes and handbags for $29.99. 60% off the finest jewelry and the coolest coats for the warmest family at up to 60% off. Plus, get free shipping on lordandtaylor.com. Going on now at the best price secret, Lord and Taylor.